Everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the VOD Squad, the show where we talk about streaming technology. This is episode 182 on May 13th, 2020. I am Clyde, and today I am joined by Matthew Ross. Hey, everybody. Jimmy Trammell. Hey, guys. And Michael Aston. <laughs> no, I'm not actually <laughs> muted this time. I through with it because I actually remembered. Thank you, Clyde. <laughs> you are welcome. Oh, how's everybody doing? Not bad. It's, it's been a uh, Wednesday. It's been a Wednesday. Uh, the 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 monotony continues in, the, in our household, where essentially it's all homework and ha meals and 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 work work and remote work and. Yes, it, it feels like we've been doing this for what month is this? May. Forever. May, yeah. <laughs> All year long, it feels like. So. Well, I mean, as I pointed out before, I mean, technically, I'm almost up to a year of this, so. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I don't know what everybody's complaining about. I kind of like do, it. How do you, well, okay, are you helping the kids with homework? I don't have kids here. Do you have oh, okay? I live by uh, myself. It's do awesome. You have, do you have incompetent users who need support? I mean, not well. Yeah, I mean, I I work for users. a company. <laughs> well, yeah, but, uh, and do you have a significant other who also requires tech support? Nope i I, okay. I cut out all of that. Like I said, okay. I, I'm living the I'm living the nice life. Well, that's what I'm dealing with. So, <laughs> see, I I'm in practice for when I go uh, full hermit twenty four seven. Mm. Mm -hmm. How 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 will you? Oh, are, well, is it, are you so right now the practice of being going full hermit? Uh, do you plan on ever go leaving the house to get food? I yeah. That's the nice thing is I don't have to. I know. So A I was just curious. Call your... mean will bring anything to my door. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So a modern day hermit. Gotcha. So my in my my ideal hermit uh, would be I deal with people on my terms when mm. I feel like it, you know. And okay. when I don't, I don't. And that's the way it is now. I talk to you guys on the internet, and maybe I'll go to a store. But then speaking of speaking of stores, have you tried Instacart? I haven't, uh, just because I don't. We tried Instacart for the first time last week. We had the, our, our had our shopper go to Costco. He chatted with us with the things that were out of stock and that he picked up in alternatives for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it it was not bad. It was more yeah. expensive than it initially thought because they said, "Oh, the whole thing only costs six bucks," but. There's a couple other fees. It ended up costing us about twenty dollars to have the guy come out and do all that work for us. But um, I, we basically did it as a test to see if we could do it, what it would look like, what it would be like for us, and if we were in a situation where we could not leave the house, it actually might make sense for us. So it was good, good experience. It was fast and very competent. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, even I mean, you know, you don't have to burn your gas to go get it, right? So. <laughs> You know, I mean, yeah, it's, um, uh, I, I like the service. I'm getting where I use it more and more. I, I used it some even before, you know, the pandemic and everything. But, um, uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's really a good service. Well, I, I did that, I, like uh, I mean, several years ago, uh, the first time I was unemployed, like in forever, just happened mm -hmm. to be during the winter. Um, so I spent the entire winter in my house and I didn't mm -hmm. leave unless I really had motivation to leave. And it was awesome. It was the first time I didn't like want to like burn everything down because it was so freaking <laughs> cold. Um, 
and yeah, they uh, one of the grocery stores had recently had just started doing the internet ordering. So this would have mm -hmm. been about 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, or no, it was 2008. Um, yeah, and I, whenever I needed stuff, it was 40 below. I'm like, I'm not going to the grocery store. I just hopped on the website. I just had to make sure I didn't like order produce because nobody's going to pick the produce I want. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> but I mean, stuff that's in a box or a can or is frozen. Yeah, I, I, I trust other people. I mean. It's we we've used Walmart's delivery because that's the only actual grocery store. Well, Amazon Fresh, which is predominantly Whole Foods, uh, also delivers as well. Um, but the, their selection is very different. And so uh, we usually use the Walmart thing. We have let them pick uh, some of our fruits and vegetables. And what we found is, at least at Walmart, all the good produce is what they select. Like they must keep it separated. Because <laughs> we'd go, to the, we used to go to the store and never find good produce. But now that we're ordering it and having it delivered to us, we get good produce almost every time. Keep the good stuff in the back, huh? Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's funny because literally we would we we basically never bought produce at Walmart because there was never good produce. We'd go there and buy box stuff and then go across the way to HEB, which is a, a Texas grocery store, and buy our produce there. I remember I remember back in the late 90s, you know, I lived out in California back then, right, you know, around the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, there was a company by the name of Webvan that mm -hmm. uh, used to do this, right? They, they I think they went bankrupt after a while, but. Um, but you know, it, it kind of reminds me that Instacart is kind of like that, right? You know, just whatever grocery store is local to you. I mean, it can be mm -hmm. Publix, which is my local uh, grocery store, or it could be, um, you know, Costco, I think is one of them. It's, it's a big, long list. And Webvan used to do a, a similar thing, you know, way back. I, I think Webvan was one of the dot-com companies that went bankrupt. Simon Delivers but, uh, came out around that same time and yeah. didn't yeah, that, last yeah, very long. I, I, right, exactly. I think they were it was along the same. A little time. ahead of their time. Not right. not as many people had ubiquitous or web access wasn't ubiquitous yet. Um, yeah, right. Then the thought of doing it was still still very foreign well, back yeah. then. So yeah. it was the first dot com. Yeah. Things I mean, blew up, you, you know, things you, didn't work out. Text like messaging that. wasn't even a thing yet. You have you picked up your phone and actually spoke with people well you, people had pagers <laughs> well the pagers were old hat because you had a cell phone now but uh, the cell phone didn't have the texting really yet in like 99 2000 <laughs> um and if you did people didn't know it you'd send them a text and they just you'd never get a response because they didn't know what that icon was or or if they were really sophisticated they'd call you and say why are you using on my text? I only have five a month. Exactly. <laughs> no, Day, don't you know that every text costs me 63 cents? Or or that, yes. Yeah. You, you have to pay for every one of them. You don't get any free. You remember but back yeah. when it did cost you uh, 20 cents to receive, 20 cents to send a text? Oh, my goodness. It, 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 it makes me laugh a little bit and feel somewhat nostalgic every time I get one of those messages as I sign up for a, a new – SMS alert and it's like charges may apply. It's like, yeah, what are we in like nineteen, like two thousand two or something like? Well, I mean, text messages. You can still time. opt out of a text plan. Yes, you can. Yeah. That Not that's why they put that disclaimer it's... on there. <laughs> and technically, yeah. you're paying for the texting, so your charges have applied. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's just it's funny because yeah. almost everybody has unlimited texting now, and yeah. but it used to be that you could not get unlimited texting and you paid a pretty penny. Yep. Like I remember friends who didn't realize that it was costing them and they racked up hundreds of dollars of text messages in a matter of days. Did they get one of those early iPhone bills that's delivered by a truck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a forklift. <laughs> yeah. 
I can I can remember my daughter. I remember seeing one bill where you know she would go like over ten thousand text messages in a month. <laughs> I was like, how is that even possible to send that many text messages in a month? And now you're like, oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to know why am I still paying for voice? Um, <laughs> yeah. So you yeah, get you get a cell phone without. Yes, I mean, the only people that are calling me are like robots. So <laughs> yeah. Um, and my dad, it, it, but I agree. I get I get scam calls, and my boss and my mom is the only people that call me. I'm like, we're sitting here on Zoom, and my boss calls me on my phone. I'm like, you've got Zoom in front of you and on your phone, and yeah, you're calling my phone number. Like, I don't <laughs> understand this whole Zoom thing. I'm like, want to blow your mind? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> but I will that say this is technology. hooked up to Google Voice. Oh, <laughs> I use this while I'm working at home. My desk phone is forwarded to this. There you go. Because yeah. then I know I can actually look at if that rings. I know I do need to answer it because it's work related. Wow! Well, what yeah. is that device there, Clyde? I, is that a TV remote? I know, right? <laughs> it, it, Listen to this. <laughs> that's like an old harmony remote right like that's what <laughs> can you hear that no oh. but I, I i similarly like literally yesterday i was on a conference call and one of the the ceo of the other company we were working with got a phone call while we were on the phone and it rang one of those old actual bell rings mm -hmm. ring. and i was like I haven't heard that outside of TV in like 20 years. That that actually a project that I've been working on is there are on the wall old phone jacks in this house. <laughs> and I've been looking for old rotary phones <laughs> that I can hook up and have my own in-house PBX. Nice. Mainly because my kids yeah. don't know what a rotary phone is or how to operate it uh <laughs> rotary phones getting a pbx to pick to be able to do the pole styling that you have to make sure you get one that works with pole styling. well I, it doesn't need to call out I'm i know just but doing still... one inside but yeah you can get old pbx's from like the 90s okay for like yeah, nothing gotcha. well yeah. uh, you can get modern ones for like nothing yeah <laughs> but but yeah, I don't know if they do pulse anymore that's the thing yeah i mean and i really all it's got to do is just ring the phone the other one downstairs mm -hmm. but oh yeah sure uh on i can that talk topic, your ear off of that so that's the end of nostalgia week yeah we oh, should come on <laughs> i like nostalgia <laughs> weekly we should probably uh move into uh what we're actually here to talk about yeah okay well well yeah. how about this hey guys you know that uh google's have been working on their android tv platform for a long time yep and they're uh, they've been talking about various upgrades to it and uh and various and what they might be doing with their next version of android uh, um, with the android tv uh based on the newest version which should be android tv version 11 based mm -hmm. on 11. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like they've been thinking about doing some rebranding. This is a thing Google does every once in a while. They've been doing some rebranding various things. And they're possibly going to rename Android TV to uh, its new name, Google TV. Talk about nostalgia. Isn't Google TV the original name? Of See, that Google. was the whole reason they went with Android TV was to, to get away from the Google TV stigma. The fact that they would even consider going back to it, I find that laughable. I don't <laughs> believe they would ever do it. I do think Google TV was the superior name. It was also the superior platform. But it, I, they didn't give it the time to uh, uh, really... I mean, it was awesome. It was an awesome platform. Yeah. Um, it just... Uh, there, there were some problems that were caused by the... Uh, other companies because you got to remember that came out before streaming apps this right, is when right. the when NBC and CBS and all them said why do we need a streaming app right fine yeah. we put the video on our website if people wanted to watch it they can just go to the website yeah. right which is what the Google, Google TV, TV did 
was allowed you to open up a browser and play that video on your TV. They didn't like it, so they blocked uh, any connections from that browser. Right. Um, And then I think that was deemed illegal, right? Like, you're not actually After the fact. But by the time (laughs) they, you know, it came out, it couldn't do the things that it was advertised to do which was watch video content from people's websites on your TV. Right. Um, and then people just said, I paid too much and this is terrible. And then, yeah. Um, no, I, I don't think they'll, I don't think they'll call it Google TV again. But I they should. Know. They will. They oh, I, 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 I agree with what you said first there, Clyde. I think this is the proper branding. I think oh, it, it should be called uh, Google TV. And that's right. what it was called originally. Um, right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, agreed. And, and I liked it better when it was Google TV. Yeah. Right. But also Google TV has connotations because uh, the Google TV hardware was completely different. Uh, it wasn't based on Android. Well, it was completely different than Android. Mm-hmm. Um, and it had a tuner built in. Right. Um, it was more powerful. But yes, they they went to the Android TV name to get away from that stigma that had been attached to the Google TV. Um, you know, it'd be like if Ford, I you know, uh, Ford could probably put out an Edsel now. It's mm-hmm. been long enough that, right. but but still, there are people that remember that name, uh, and uh, now, see- attribute it to the failure that was Edsel. No, see, see, it, it, the, the better analog would be as if Ford made a car called the Ford truck or the Ford car or whatever, and then there was a bad one, and they decided to rename it the Taurus. That's or something the Edsel. Like that. Yeah, I know. Well, I know, I know, and uh, I know the Edsel was Ford's son. I get it. But um, then deciding to go back to it after been a, it's long enough, and the product is good. Don't worry, people won't care. Maybe there'll be some people like, oh yeah, it was good back, you know, it was bad back then. I'm like, yeah, we know. That's why we made a better one. Um, and but, I, here's the thing. Google's been rebranding everything Google because they're realizing it's the better branding, and they've been slowly, very slowly, making Android disappear. I mean, even on their own phones, uh, you see Android once on there, it says it when it boots up, and then everything else is Google after that. So I mm-hmm. think they're abandoning all the other brands and trying to circle the wagons around the the Google brand. I mean, I, I agree, but also historically, when you see Google change the name to something from something, you never see them go back to a previous name. Uh, okay. That, um, that is the one reason I say that I don't think they will is because uh, they're always moving forward. They almost never, you, you wouldn't see uh, duo become, uh, what was the thing that we were using? Um, oh, before that, uh, uh before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when, yeah. Was, but no, it was there between was, hangouts and duo, but yeah, no, no, there it was just the duo and the other one uh, was announced at the same time that they were technically different apps, Yeah, but, um, one was a chat app and one was a video. Yeah, there was the a chat app we used before Discord, but yeah, uh, um, yeah. yeah it, it, I I wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, there are a lot, uh, but Google TV isn't far enough in the past. Uh, Clyde, I'm gonna contradict you a little bit. G G Talk turned into Hangouts and Hangouts chat, Hangouts uh, 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 Hangouts uh, Meet turned into Google Meet. So I, they kind but of it, done this, but not G Talk. They didn't go back to G Talk. No, they didn't. Yeah, but G Talk is Google Talk. Come yes, on. but uh, in this <laughs> Google TV was. Now if I you, understand. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, I yeah. apologize. And no, no, I, 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 I think I, I do think it's the right, the right move. It should be Google TV. They should have just called it the Google TV two, mm-hmm. um, in the first place. But yeah. yeah, it was a move to disassociate with the failure, um. And yeah, yeah. I, I, I suppose, but I, but I, you know, still, I, I still think the better branding. I mean, what if they go with it or not? I, I still think the better branding is Google TV. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Now I'm going to be slightly missing my Android because it's cute. But other than that, that you're right. Please say that again. Okay. <laughs> 
Hey, uh, uh, moving on, we have a story here about uh, uh, Apple, and it's a po- rumor that they're going to be coming up with a newer version of their Apple TV. Uh, they last had an update for the Apple TV, the Apple TV 4K, uh, back in 2017, I believe, and so it's been mm-hmm. almost three years. And mm-hmm. so this new one should be having their brand or their newer A twelve X processor inside, plenty of RAM. It's rumored to have a start of sixty four gigabytes up to one hundred twenty twenty eight gigabytes of internal memory, and it should be uh, shipping any time now. According to the rumors, they are ready to go. They just were waiting for Apple to make the announcement and make it happen. Uh, yes. What if you were to want a single amazing feature out of a new Apple TV? What would it be? We'll start with Jimmy because I know what everybody else is going to say. Yeah. So uh, what I think this is going to be this is going to be a play for their uh, uh, Arcadia service. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Right? So their their gaming platform. So I think I think that's what this is going to be. What this is going to bring, right? Because I mean, yeah. You know, besides that. Uh, I mean, the Apple 4K TV probably does everything that this one will do, apart from maybe the better performance for gaming, right? So okay. I think that's what this is going to be a play for. Maybe maybe there's some other feature that will come with it. I don't know. We'll see, right? But uh, but that's that's what I think is, is going to be this. You know, hence the uh, higher uh, storage capacities, too, with this rumored uh, Apple t- new Apple TV. Right. Uh, Michael, Clyde, what do you guys think uh, is going to be my picture? Well, so what would I like to see it out of an Apple TV was your first question. You want to see right. and it. I would Google. like it to be a Fire TV. I oh. thought you wanted it to run Google <laughs> TV. No, um, <laughs> yeah. No, I think that Jimmy is exactly right. Like the, the horsepower they're putting behind this very similar to what they have in their iPad Pro and the additional storage, which doesn't make a ton of sense for just a pure streaming device. They're obviously angling towards a a device that is used for more than streaming and likely that implies gaming. Yeah, I, I'd and- say the, the very first thing it would need before I would even consider mm-hmm. it is a remote that I can hold go. in my hand. <laughs> that the I, remotes that are on these things are terrible in my opinion they're not uh they're they're just not comfortable the um, remote is divisive it and the, is, and the remote love it. And, and remote is one of those things that it like that it's one? the thing that you're going to be touching all the time yes yeah so i i imagine what if they were to do a big change i don't think they'll abandon the touch pa- the magic touchpad on the remote but I would imagine it would make a lot of sense if they made the remote also work as a game pad a little easier, mm-hmm. a little better. Um, I mean, the uh, Roku stand- does that great. Has, the Roku's, I, right. the Roku's had the one and two was button, designed like and that. it's comfortable in my hand, mm-hmm. and it, I can turn it sideways and it still feels comfortable. Um, right. well, and that's why it's well, my favorite. No, I, I mean, yeah, Claude brings up a good point. You know, they could definitely do better on the remote. I mean, the remote, keep in mind, the remote is a Johnny Ive design. Oh, yeah. Right. right? Oh, it's yeah, so stuff. Apple. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah, which, which I mean, I, I mean, and I kind of straddled the fence there a little bit. Yeah. yeah, the design of it is nice, little simple, flat, nice design, right? But when you're talking about using it practically, yeah, it could you know? I mean, it, it it works, but you know, you could make a more functional remote than and that. And right? if so. if it, any device that tells me that, oh well, you can just use your phone as a remote, that's an automatic mm-hmm. no for me. If I have to grab my phone, you designed your device wrong. So no Chromecast for you. No, they, well, exactly. That's yeah. why I've never <clears throat> used. I don't. I can't yeah. use a Chromecast. I hate it. Yeah, um, but, I, I. I mean, I. I and again, that. this is personal. But, but I, this is absolute personal. I, I, sure, sure, and, and I understand why you say that. But, uh, but I mean, I kind of like the software remote. But, uh, but that's because I don't have a. We have this as yeah, the yeah. hardware remote, right? So yeah, I think um, my it, my statement on that is that if they choose to include a remote. It should be one that perfectly satisfies anybody that wants a remote. If they offer an addition of an app to control it as your phone, Mm -hmm. as the remote, 
it's totally reasonable. That is a feature that some people will like. I wouldn't want to have to leave uh, my game or book or whatever I'm doing on my phone in order to control the TV. Exactly. So I would prefer to have a remote personally. Exactly. That said, some people like the remote. And it's fine to me if, like the Chromecast, they opt to not have a remote at all. That's what you go in knowing, right? You go in knowing it doesn't have a remote. Mm -hmm. I have to use my phone. But if I'm going to include a remote and I'm going to make it bad so people don't like it, that's a problem because people will buy it thinking that they get a remote and it's a crappy remote. That's a problem. I'm not saying that's the case here, though it is divisive. Some people don't like it. Um, it doesn't look like a form factor that I would enjoy. I think that it looks like a very small and sleek remote, which mm -hmm. there's a size where my big clumsy hands can't handle and control something very well. So I'd rather something well, that's got a little bit of heft to it. Mm -hmm. Right. The, uh, Roku TV remote is perfect. Right. I, I mean, yeah, you're bringing up good points. I mean, yeah, when you, and I'll have to say, because I've owned, a, you know, two or three different uh, Apple TVs, and the re remote, when you first look at it, looks pretty, right? Looks great, right? But then after after you try to use that thing, you know, and all, and, all, and not saying that it's terrible on use, but when you compare it to other remotes, that's where it kind of, you know, I, I got to say, though, short a little bit. The, the current I, remote I, reminds me of those terrible credit card remotes that come with every cheap electronic thing out of China. <laughs> you buy a, a well, HDMI switcher. No, but that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, with yeah the, from with looking the, at it. Yeah, yeah. And right. I mean, even feel it, holding it. I just don't. Yeah, it's so to be clear, all of us that have any issues with this remote, though, it's not really the remote's fault. The remote is perfect. We're just holding it wrong. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but also, uh, make a note of my stance on this because we're I'm gonna I'm gonna cover that in uh something else later. So now you're getting it back. <laughs> but 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 the thing is, you know, I I don't know. I mean, you know, Apple even now, you know, has um you know, game controllers that you can buy that will work with the Apple TV even now, even the current 4K Apple TV. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if Apple makes their own branded uh, controllers. There has been some rumors of that, right? I would so, love to see what Apple's idea of a gaming controller. I bet you it's it's a, mouse a little well uh, with one with, button. Oh, <laughs> I bet you it's kind of weird, kind of like the uh, the Steam controller was weird. I bet you it will be something that'll be mm. foreign for most people, and some people will like it, and some people will hate it. So, mm. I be, I, but I'm always interested to see people try to iterate. So I'll, you know, the Maybe. only people who seem to be really good at iterating like that is Nintendo. So we'll see. Yeah. They, oh, uh, you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna pick up the the boomerang remote that Nintendo ended up not using. You remember that? No. Uh, pre Wii, uh, oh. Nintendo had put out pictures of a new remote. This was around the time <laughs> that the PS3 and the Xbox 360 came out. Okay. Um, yeah, look it up. Uh, Nintendo yeah. Boomerang. Um, All right. And I will which ended up, up never seeing the light of day. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think that's what Apple's going to run with. All right. Uh, hey, uh, Spotify is a service you can use to stream lots of music and lots of podcasts. Mm -hmm. And Spotify is testing a new beta for set allowing you to watch the video version of the of the podcast as well as seeing here mm -hmm. having the audio version. So it basically, it means that you that they are looking at possibly just testing a couple of their well known uh, uh, podcasts and making a versions of uh, Zane and Hearth unfiltered. Uh, a, a various uh, one of their uh, various uh, shows uh, with a video version so you can decide if you wish to watch as well as listen. Hey, are we going to put ourselves on Spotify? Maybe. Be, um, why Sometime. not? We should do this. Well, when, when we can hire why someone not? to do the, to make the audio versions. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, unless one of you guys wants to do it, that, that's fine. It, it, um, it's really easy. Drag um, it into drag well, the Well, you gotta, into... you gotta 
separate it from the video, then you've got to trim it, and then you've got to put on the pieces that go on the front and back. Takes time. Um, okay. If someone wants to do it, sure. All right. Yeah, so my question on this one is like, you know, so why wouldn't people just watch YouTube instead? A good question. And also a lot of people watch YouTube in the background with it playing so you can hear it too. So it's a good question. Spotify's just competing and they are pushing really hard into the podcast. I'm 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 in the camp of know your role. Uh Spotify is for <laughs> your ears, not your eyes. Um, okay. Spotify is the thing that runs in my car where Video isn't an option. I am in and the in camp my garage of, when I'm not paying attention. So no, I am using your phone wrong if video is not an option while you're driving. <laughs> I just choose not to go to jail. That, it's a no. choice that I make. Yeah, I am in the camp of yes, this should be a thing where you can easily have your video also become just oh, yeah. audio only, and there should be standards for it so everybody does it the same way. And, so, and I'm not saying they Spotify, shouldn't do it. Make I'm, it a standard. Yeah. I, I'm not I like saying it. they shouldn't do it. I'm just saying I'm not interested. Okay. But I'm also like not interested in their podcasts anyway. So I if I, I was it. using Spotify, I would like the it, so here's the thing. If I'm a Spotify user and I use it for my podcasts, it makes sense for me to keep things in one place especially if there's a way to have that podcast linked to the video of it so that I can know which podcasts I've listened to. And so when I go to view, I can, it will show the only the ones I haven't listened to or show that that one I've listened to. And even better, if similar to what Amazon does with their whisper sync, if I could listen to 20 minutes of the podcast in my car, go home, pull up mm -hmm. the video podcast on my computer, and it would start where I was listening. That would be think great. This would be great. So maybe we aren't there yet, but I think they're on to something as long as they follow through with these extra and if features. I recall correctly, Spotify a couple years ago implemented a thing that allowed video to go along with the music. So depending on the platform, like if you're listening to Spotify on your phone, not in the car, but just actually natively on the phone, then mm -hmm. uh, it would go to like a screen with like the lyrics and stuff um which was cool not something yeah. i ever use but i mean something that they've already done in this <laughs> space so i mean the yeah. having uh them provide video content is not foreign or a, not a foreign idea um just again not something i'm interested in yeah, I think they're just too late to the game, right? I mean, I, I mean, unless they can do really something that will set them apart from the other people that are already doing this. Well, I don't think they're late um, to the game because what they're doing is they're offering uh, unification to a fractured ecosystem. Because right. there's millions of people that go to Spotify uh, for, me, all, for all their music, like me. I don't listen to music anywhere but Spotify. I'm also a podcast listener. So, hey, if you're already here for the music, why not just get your podcast here, too? Right. Yeah. Oh, that podcast sure. has video, so you have to go elsewhere? Oh, no, we, we've got that here, too. I yeah. mean, so I, I get the play. Um, and I, I, I think they're moving in the right um, pace. It's just, again, not for me. Yeah. I, I just think most people are going to watch their podcasts elsewhere already. Oh, but they want to take that YouTube crown. Trust me. Yeah, I, I, I mean, may, maybe they'll compete. Maybe, maybe they will win some of that market. But I, I think it might be a little late. I think that the the challenge to the the challenge to to what you're saying though is that YouTube doesn't offer audio only podcast content. No. If YouTube did, then I would be super excited because I find it annoying to have to have a podcasting app. Well, myself, YouTube right? does offer it. It's an app called Google Podcasts. <laughs> right, <laughs> but it's not linked. And well, that's the thing. But yes, that's what I use is Google Podcasts. 
I, I if if that was a tightly integrated system, that would be great. See, and so that's exactly you're is, the you're I the would, kind of person that Spotify is aiming yeah, for. Yeah, I would switch if it offered those two things: an it's integrated the, system with the podcasts and the video podcasts, mm -hmm. and the ability to swap between the two. Mm -hmm. I would totally be on board with this. I would probably subscribe to Spotify just for this, even though I don't have a subscription with them. Yeah. Well, but in my daughter's generation, they do exactly that with YouTube. They just don't watch the video. Yep. Right. They, they just listen to it. Yeah, but you right? can't play. But you can't play YouTube. Uh, there are scenarios where you can't. Like with Android Auto, it will not let me even launch YouTube. Um, yeah. so even though I'm driving, I can't even, I can't listen to my podcasts in the car, uh, well, and, and then pick up the video when I get to where I want it to, because yeah. it won't even run. It would be so easy for them to do because all they'd have to do is in the podcast app, have a link to the video mm -hmm. with some type of like yeah. plus or minus number of seconds that to, in order for it to sync up with the video and the audio so, be done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think there's a couple of things here that are really important to, to make this successful. One of the things is what Matt said is a way to be able to just upload one and get both. Right. And that solves another big problem, right? Like there are people out there that don't put up video podcasts. They only do audio podcasts because there is a larger audience for mm -hmm. audio podcasts. When it comes to podcast content, like long form. A video podcast is a vlog. <laughs> yes, right. So, but but the point is that there is like for hour long content, podcasting is more common and successful, I think. I, I don't have those numbers, but I believe that is true. Um, and so you have a lot of content that's like that. People mm -hmm. like, I don't know if, jury still does um could would easily be able to do video for his politics 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 podcast he used to do it now he only does it as audio because i don't think he had that many viewers not compared to how many listeners he had and if he could just upload the video because i'm sh i'm sure he's still doing it in his studio if he could just upload the video have it parse out the audio for him create the podcast and have people be able to sync between the two, maybe he'd go back to the video, which I would be on board for because I like listening to that podcast and I kind of enjoy watching him because he does funny things. Yeah, I agree. I think it would be wonderful too. And I want it universal again. I want this to be a standard that <laughs> oh, everybody handles. And well. I, I just remembered why I don't use Spotify or Google Podcasts for... Uh, my podcasting needs because mm. neither one supports custom RSS. Mm. Mm. So my mm. Patreon customized RSS feeds, I can't load them. I can't listen to so them. So what is your pointless. podcasting app? So I've been using Double Twist ah, um, I've ever used them since. A long time ago. But and that's the thing is I've been using it since my first Android phone in 2010, um, and it's work for me all this time and it knows what okay. you know so it's like man i just keep using it all right hey uh so youtube tv and cbs uh viacom cbs have uh gotten together and made a deal uh they have they've a baby? Uh, uh they've they mm -hmm. haven't had a ma baby. baby um what maybe a spongebob <laughs> square pants shaped baby I, I sure hope not. I <laughs> sure hope not. But I do imagine that he will appear on YouTube TV from this point on because their extended expanded deal does mean that they're going to be getting lots of new channels from the Viacom CBS on the YouTube TV platform. And it looks like it's coming in two waves. The first wave will include BET, CMT, Comedy Central, MTV, Nickelodeon, Paramount Network, TV Land, and VH1. And the other ones are like the secondary channels, BET, Her, Her MTV2, Nick Jr., Nick Tunes, Teen Nick, MTV Classic. Those are all going to be coming at a later time this year. So this means uh, that now I can drop my Philo uh, subscription if I want to, because it looks like everything is now available on my, 
on my YouTube TV. Maybe not everything. I'll have to double check. But this they, this means that there's almost everything now available on that platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the only question I have from this, because, you know, whatever makes sense, more channels and stuff. The only question I have from this is, is MTV Classic... Does that mean there's actually music television? No, it's showing the real, <laughs> early seasons of the real world and road rules. <laughs> and maybe, uh, what was that, Six Feet Under? What was the one about? Oh, no, what was that show about the kids that were going to die at 18? Um, <laughs> that their brain would explode or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I, I stopped watching MTV back in like the 90s when they stopped playing music related content so. you mean music videos <laughs> you know well, even yeah. even even when they stopped playing music videos and were mostly like music well related. i don't know yeah. like on dh1 hat it was music related video and movie and tv yeah but once they became the real world channel it, that was the end yeah of I, i'm with my my give me the 1980s mtv I, yeah. I I would be really happy to if you know uh, money for nothing and my um, the chicks for free. Give me my give me my MTV guys. Come on, <laughs> I'd like to have that back. That's right. I mean seriously. I mean I know it'd all be uh, uh, rappers and 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 pop and all the funk and all those weird. Well, stuff you need to throw time, your so. trash away. Don't leave those rappers laying around everywhere. Okay. Well, sorry. <laughs> So uh, let's see. Next story we have for everybody today is, oh, guys, did you know HBO Max is coming out and they're coming up with all various new uh, features coming with uh, everything that they're doing today, including there's a story elsewhere about how um, a lot of people are getting get moved over to it for uh, a lot more people are going to be moved over to it without fuss, thanks to more deals. But that's not this story. This story is that when that um, HBO Max is going to have many various titles from the Crunchyroll service. Now, that's because Warner Media owns Crunchyroll. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be coming out with 17 initial titles from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And uh, I don't think I've ever heard of this other one. Runari Kenshin and Andy Raced, for example. So these are various, uh, uh, <laughs> these are various new, uh, uh, new, not new. Uh, newer shows that are going to be available for you to see on the new HBO Max when it launches. Yeah, um, I'm not surprised. And for those of you that don't know, Crunchyroll is the service that specializes in subbed content. So if you for like anime. subtitles, or uh, subbed uh, content when it comes to anime, Funimation is the competitor owned by Sony now. Uh, oh. They they do the dub stuff. Um, so, no, I, yeah, I, I've watched. The, so I think I've seen the first few episodes of Full Metal Alchemist. That looked like a really awesome show. I'm going to have to uh, uh, probably pick that up again to watch it again. Yeah, yeah, you can watch that pretty much anywhere. If you're talking yeah. Full Metal Alchemist or Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, because they redid oh. it, retold the story and changed oh. it a little bit under Brotherhood. Really? Um, but we we talk about that later. Okay, well, I believe I watched the first one, not the Brotherhood one. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, the, the bit about this story I like is that, you know, for the pre-order promotion, the price drops from $15 a month to $12 a month. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a very good deal. You have to sign up with an account that isn't already being used for yep. HBO. They won't, otherwise they won't let you do it. So you might need to find a new email address. Uh, CBS uh -huh. plans the overhaul of all their all access, uh, their all access uh, brand, and they are planning to make a new branding for it uh, in the future. Nobody's exactly certain what the what they're going to call it, but this is uh, them deciding that the CBS all access brand uh, needs updating one way or another. So here it is, because what do you guys think it's going to be called? It's a new CBS. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was. That was a, a Freudian slip. <laughs> um, CBS Max. C <laughs> CBS Max. CBS. A Freudian slip. Slightly more than no, not all, but called all access. I know what it CBS. is. Okay. Star Trek Plus. Ooh, I, you know what? 
I think that would sell. It's going to be I, all I the that. Star Trek you ever wanted, plus other stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I would buy that. I, I bet think you that would. would sell. I bet you that would sell really well. The, the Star Trek channel, I think it would sell amazingly well. And call it plus because, oh, yeah, another stuff too. Totally. People would pick that up and eat it with your life. <laughs> All right, uh, Alamo Draft House has uh, been closed because of a various you know, worldwide pandemic, and rules are not allowing them to open until well, um, possibly soon. They're going to start opening up with uh, limited uh, limited availability. Uh, but they've been trying to uh, launch a new service where they will be able to uh, to uh, send to you a streaming of videos on demand. So, uh, so they're literally being their own streaming service for um, sending out various. Uh, of their own run shows, apparently. Um, so no, not just their own shows. They've got a couple of ones from Lionsgate as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is them literally deciding to take the uh, the current situation and try to uh, make it work in our new reality. What do you guys think of this? They've been they've been trying this for a while. Um, going, I remember reading it, or I got an email from them back before the quarantine was in full effect, where they were. Uh, saying, hey, join us uh, for a such and such movie on this day online. They were doing like B-movie kind of stuff they didn't need permission to show. Mm -hmm. Like okay. uh, old uh, royalty free, you know, stuff. Uh, or that's old enough to copyright no longer. Um, I can't think of the right word. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm not surprised. I mean, they got to do something. Uh, they yeah. <laughs> are a company where their entire infrastructure depends on one thing, showing movies. And yeah. Right. So, I by think, the way, the, the word you're looking for was in the public domain. Yes, public domain. Yeah. yeah. So this this makes a lot of sense, having being a fan of Alamo Draft House and going there very regularly. It's, it's my theater of choice. Um they have been all about doing um, experiences mm -hmm. and shows that are more than just the movie for a long time. And also being, despite being a major cinema that has all the blockbusters and stuff, they also operate somewhat like an art house theater in that they do show lower, lower number films, the things like Parasite were in there. Um, so you can see movies that aren't the blockbusters that are kind of indie films and stuff there. That's always been a thing that they do. So this really makes sense. It's part of the culture, the vibe, and the um, kind of the history of the draft house. And so it, it totally makes sense. It works well. I look forward to it because I think that they'll find ways to add something interesting to it more than just what you get on most streaming services you know um they, they they're really good at creating experiences out of movie viewing and i think they'll do mm -hmm. some great things here so i'm excited yeah I, I mean to me this raises kind of like a part a part b question right you know part a being you know is this just you know a movie theater trying to grab what money they can given the situation obviously yes Right. Partially, yes, at least. But the yeah. uh, but the um, uh, but the part B to that, you know, is this another death knell in the coffin of movie theaters? Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a question. I, I don't know. You know, I. I, I mean, I, I I hope not, but you know, but you gotta you gotta wonder. I think what you're gonna find is movie theaters like the Draft House that find ways to innovate that add more to the experience are the ones that are going to survive. They yep. have great, I, food. Right. I like going there. I'll go there. I would go there just for the food and mm -hmm. you get a movie experience in a comfortable seat. I mean, they don't have the recliners because they're more food oriented. They've got much better eating set up than most of the places with recliners. So mm -hmm. I'm, I, I love going there. Like I said, it's, it's an experience and they added so much. So I think places like the Draft House probably aren't going to have an issue. Obviously, you never know because, you know, what the way their finances are 
it's a difficult industry to be in, but mm -hmm. assuming that they can weather this particular challenge and get through it, I don't think they're going to have a problem. And I think places like them are going to be okay. It's the big ones that don't set themselves apart in any meaningful ways. You know, Cinemark has recliners and stuff, but there's no reason to go to a Cinemark versus an AMC versus a Regal. Uh, they're they're all more or less the same comfy chairs. Most of them have recliners now. Big movie screens with the popcorn. Surrounds. Popcorn's completely different at each one. <laughs> uh, AMC makes yeah. me physically ill. Uh, Regal's <laughs> not bad. I've never yeah. been to a Cinemark, so I can't comment. But I mean, it's just there's just not enough difference to me. It's still popcorn, hot dogs, nachos, and frozen pizza. Whoa. Those are your options, dude. And, <laughs> Oh, and, yeah, the, and, the draft house that has a full menu. It, it's a frozen pizza. They they don't even cook it for you. They just give it to you. <laughs> they give it to you frozen. It thaws <laughs> and then you leave it in your car as you watch the movie. So by about halfway through the movie, you can bite through it. <laughs> oh, thank goodness it's not like that. Actually, it's a little soggy and cold. <laughs> uh, what's but going extra on? But it's kind of extra crispy, if you ask me. I, uh, so this says uh, last week uh, was the final week of Lionsgate's uh, four movie marathon. Every Friday for the past uh, four month or so, they've been uh, yeah been on YouTube providing a free show for you guys to see. Last week it was John Wick, uh, but uh, before that they had La La Land, da Dirty Dancing, and The Hunger Games. Um, these, uh, this is what they've got. A lot of companies announced their free stuff that they were giving away due to the current crisis. And, uh, this was their way of, of trying to keep people interested in their stuff and kind of trying to share in the love. Uh, I was just curious if anybody here actually go to one of these and, or anything like this, where somebody was providing a free service like this. And if they did, what did you guys think of the experience? I provided a service, uh, this okay. service on Saturday. And we watched The Fuzz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was fuzz a lot of fun. The fuzz? No, The Fuzz. It the was fuzz. apparently a puppet-based crime show that was aired on some channel at one point, And they took all five episodes and cut them together into a movie. Yeah. And it works yeah. as a movie. See, your streaming service could survive this mm -hmm. because it adds something to the experience. This, to me is a movie at a set time, which is anathema to everything that I am. I agree. Like, yeah, but the, the difference here is that, yes, it is at a set time, just like my movie events are at a set time. The difference is you don't really, with this, you get to watch it, but you don't get to interact with the other people watching it. That's, in yeah, a that's my point. Way. Yeah. Yeah, there's, all you've done is taken us back to the, to the 90s or the 80s when we had to watch the show when it came on TV. Right. Mm -hmm. like, Some people like on, that. That's, that doesn't make any sense. I kind of wish I would have gotten to this because I, I've i never seen John Wick. So I was like, oh, I've been, oh totally, I missed it. Darn it. Uh, yeah. yeah. If they yeah. made it, there was a way that you could do this I know. But on your schedule. Also, John on Wick, your I bet you it's streaming somewhere. Choice, I bet you it's streaming somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the point. If they had made it, if free on demand for twenty four hours, on if YouTube, this was some sort of exclusive, something you know that hadn't come out like five years ago, then it might have been exciting, like yeah. a new Lionsgate movie that wasn't you know meant to be released. But they're like, well, you know what? Screw it. It wasn't going to make any money anyway. Let's just show it for free now. Um, that would have been cool. Uh, yeah. Google Sling and USA to app. I could have watched. I can watch it if I want to. Yeah, so. it, it, and that's my point. Is uh, yeah. make a big deal about something. Make sure or, that it's actually something worth making a big deal about. <laughs> or you know, and to Mike's point, I mean, you know, okay, streaming it whatever time you know and all, but make it available twenty four hours after that. Right, that you could stream it for free. Yeah, for uh, like, that's all. That's all they had to do. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like it's, it could have been easy for them. So, yeah. 
Her, uh, so uh, Comic Con was canceled this year. The San Diego Comic Con, the biggest one of them all, and uh, nope. the so. Nope. This is the first year I'm going to get to go to San Diego Comic Con. And I was about to say, but in, in order to make it uh, available to everybody, they are now due uh, Comic uh, Comic Con at Home 2020. That's right. Sometime this summer, Ooh. they haven't announced the time yet. Oh, They're going to be providing an online version of Comic Con available for you to watch at home. And but guys, this might be the first time I ever go to Comic Con. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to San Diego Comic Con, <laughs> right? Like. It's it's every comic geek's like dream to go, but it's super expensive, and there's really the whole question of do you really want to deal with a hundred billion people? But <laughs> um, but yeah, I really want to go. I've always really wanted to go, so it's kind of exciting that I'll finally sort of get to experience a little bit of what it's like, but not really. So. I also imagine that Whatever. because of our current uh, months of, uh, of almost no news, because everything's been delayed, they will also probably have a decent number of amazing things to announce this year because of kind of a buildup of things. So it might be a really good virtual show to go to. Who knows? Could be. Yeah. I am excited. I, I will certainly watch it and or some of it. I, I'm so I'm mildly excited. I'd rather actually go to Comic-Con. This was one of those years where I was legit thinking about doing it. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was way too late by the time this whole thing happened to actually have been able it's to not go. too late now. Well, that's the problem, right? <laughs> like, that's the other problem with Comic-Con is it sells out. You like, need to be like, I think you're going about a year in advance. Yeah. yeah. I, I was there last year in the overflow, not, not in the actual venue, right? Mm -hmm. But in the overflow outside of it. Wow. But, it, but it's... Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of people, no no doubt. So, I mean, it's just it's just herds of people going into that venue. No, that no overflow doubt. has a name. It's oh. called San Diego. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it it is downtown yeah. San Diego. Yeah. Yes, it's it's I, called the it's called the Comic Con Overflow. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. technically <laughs> gas lamp, but. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> I've only been to one con in my life, which was at PAX here in Seattle. So um, it would be really cool to uh, you know, virtually go to one. I think it would be, more, if you ask me, a little more more fun. I, I, so. I was expecting to hear that like you had your identity stolen or like were missing a kidney. And you found out, oh, it, it wasn't the kind of con that you were thinking. <laughs> it was the worst kind of con. It was the worst kind of con, man. man so bad. All right, uh, Quibi TV is uh, desperately working really hard to try to make their app uh, palatable to their users for whatever reason. Don't know why. Everybody's got a phone, right? Uh, so they've uh, enabled uh, the iPhones. Uh, it's going to be ha having the ability to stream from their iPhones to a compatible device this week. And I believe what they've just enabled is the Apple AirPlay, uh, which is as simple as a couple of lines of code in their app. And may not be getting the Android users being not be able to get the same feature for a few weeks after that, probably because you know Android also has their Google Chromecasting feature, which also requires just a couple lines of code. And I don't know why Apple gets everything first. So if you've been excited to try QBs uh, on your TVs, uh, I hope you have an iPhone because that's uh, you're getting it first. Okay. Okay. Good day. <laughs> Uh, yeah. YouTube, <laughs> YouTube TV is uh, is uh, excuse me, not YouTube TV. YouTube Music has been working very hard to figure out how they're going to get people from Google Play to move over them Google Play Music over to their new service because they are planning on getting rid of Google Play Music, as sad as it is. And it looks like they have gotten the step closer. They now have a music importer added to music uh, YouTube Music, which with a single click will transfer all of your music over playlists, uploads, and purchase music in one click over to the new YouTube music interface. I've not tried this yet. I have questions. Question number one, is it a one-time transfer everything and never get anything back, or is it just a copy? And two, um, have they made YouTube music palatable to use yet? <laughs> I don't use it, so I don't know. Okay. So, so, uh, let me get this right. YouTube 
Music and Google Play is two different. Well, Google Play was around services. long. Well, Google Play was around long before YouTube Music. Uh, when Google Play okay. started, uh, it was what it was was it was basically like Drive. It was it was just cloud storage for your personal library. When it started, you copy your music up to their server, and then they stored okay. it for you. Um, and then over the years they built onto it, but since that wasn't the, you know, uh, selling music and making other libraries and stuff available, streaming wasn't the original focus. It's always been kind of kludgy. Then they launched YouTube music. Now they're kind of bringing them together. The idea behind YouTube music was that everybody was already using YouTube to listen to their music yeah. anyway, especially all the kids. They would, instead of mm -hmm. uh, uh, of using any kind of app or anything, they could just go to the web, go to YouTube, type in the name of their favorite artists, and then put that in the background and just listen to their song that, that they wanted to play. And so, so, so Google did what Google does, which is make another version of the same product. And then decide, well, we think this one's going to win eventually. So let's slowly kill off everything else and push okay. everybody into that thing. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be doing that again. And then what will happen is eventually they'll rename it Google Music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something like, like that. <laughs> or well, like, they won't uh, do that. They, they would already have a name Google Music, so they'll find a new name. to. They're going to name it Trio. Because oh, they makes... already have Duo. So they got to name it Trio. <laughs> makes Duet. Per makes perfect confusion to me. <laughs> I will go ahead and uh, investigate this further. I am a Google Play Music subscriber, and I do love my Google Play Music, but I will look into this because I know that by the end of the year, it's likely that Google Play Music is going to die. And I guess I'm going to be the person who looks into this and see if they can make it ha make me happy with it. And it's possible. They have been putting work into the product. It's just, it feels like it's really late in the game, guys. They need to have this figured out a long time ago. All right, and our last story of the game, of the game, of the show today is Amazon Fire, uh, Fire TVs uh, got a slight update to their interface. It's basically made it a lot easier for you to find what the free content is. Uh, they've added a new line to the various to the, the, the main Fire TV interface, which is the new free tab, essentially. And it allows you to get the uh, easiest to find free content, whether it's um, just free, 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 free or ad supported uh, stuff that you may be interested in watching uh, based on their various algorithms. Have you ever found it difficult to find the free shows on your Fire TV before, Mike? Um. You missed a keyword there that is, you know, going to guarantee I don't get involved, which is ad supported stuff. Uh, I don't do ads if I can avoid it. I don't. <laughs> I would rather pay for it. Like, okay. I know that, that that people probably think that makes me sound like a rich, pompous jerk, but. No, 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 we're I not just, judging. I value my time too much to sit through crappy ads. It just drives me crazy. Don't blame yeah. you. That's why, e you even that. though there are times where I just I find it hard to justify the extra money I'm spending for Hulu, but once I went without commercials, there was no way I was turning them back on. <laughs> yep, <laughs> YouTube Premium is wonderful. There's there, I've, not, I've not seen a commercial on YouTube in years. That most of the stuff that I could watch in the DVR on YouTube TV. I gladly wait until the next day so I can watch it on Hulu with no oh, yeah. ads. Oh, yeah. That's, that's why my DVR on YouTube TV is always empty. It's why as soon as my mom leaves, she's coming to stay for a couple of weeks. As soon as she leaves, we're getting rid of Hulu because the DVR stuff on Hulu has ads that you can't skip. And I can't bear it it drives me crazy i would rather not watch the show than watch the show with ads mm -hmm. so i'm either going to pay to get it without ads some way whether that means actually buying the episode yep or whatever or i'm going to not watch it like that's just the way it is sir all right well that's the week's news everybody hope everybody had a good time with that 
Woohoo! Well, uh, that brings us to the point in the show where we like to thank the people like Mbeam out there who just subscribed Aww. through uh, Amazon or through uh, Prime uh, and then Ramus last week. It's Amazon. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, great. <laughs> but, uh, you know, subscribers and supporters are the reason that we do this every week and uh, you guys are awesome uh if you would like to hit uh subscribe use that free bezos money uh you can uh <laughs> if you would prefer to go through another service uh and not give uh bezos any of your coin uh patreon is the other option uh where you can give as much or as little as you like it's up to you and uh supporters you guys are uh you, you have our ear <laughs> so yeah you, you're it's because of supporters that you get the ad free vod squad right. that being said if we didn't and, have very much support i wouldn't be opposed to putting an ad at the end of the show exactly and yeah yeah right and now this isn't an ad this is a, a thank you you know, We're right now, if Dr. Pepper it. came to me and said, hey, we want to give you guys Dr. Pepper, you just have to do an ad, I would say, number one, no, because I'm a Pepsi guy. <laughs> I'm holding out for Pepsi. And number two, no, because we have supporters. <laughs> we don't Dr. need... Pepper. I'm still angry. I'm still angry at you, Dr. Pepper Company, for uh, for forcing the real Dr. Pepper out of business, uh, Dublin, Dr. Pepper, RIP. Um, but yes, supporters, patreon.com slash the VOD squad is where you can, uh, support us in addition to those Twitch subscriptions. Thanks everybody. All righty. That would then bring us to some rants and rants. Rants, raves, anything in between, something on the spectrum. What you guys got? Anybody? Uh, I'll start. Uh, the um, We've been continuing to watch the MCU. We haven't gotten that far since last week, uh, so we're only, like, uh, I think we started Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. And I'm trying to convince my wife to watch uh, Spider-Man Homecoming because it's awesome. But she's, like, mm -hmm. tired of Spider-Man since they've had to reboot it. This is the third reboot she's from her mind. She's like, oh, goodness, not another one. But it is awesome, so I'm hoping I can get her to watch it because it's basically an Iron Man movie, which features Spider-Man. Uh <laughs> But the one I want to talk about this week is actually a different show we watched. Uh, we got recommendations from family members to see a, t a show on Hulu called Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Mm. Uh, it's uh, uh, it, and it, it looks hilarious. It's a rom com. It's you know he's got your lover's triangle, uh, and it's got a cool kind of conceit to live it. And she. She went through an MRI machine and she can now hear people's uh, thoughts as songs. They sing to her. And so it's, you know, it's got your kind of a glee feeling in that manner. I'm sure there's been other shows that's been just like this, uh, but I've got a warning for you. It also is a show that deals with grief mm. in a big way. And so we, we didn't know that and we binged through it in two days and um, yeah. It's a good, good series. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's got some feels in it. So, I gotta say, yeah, um, my wife has been enjoying it, and oh, every time that's been on, I've walked by and thought the music side of it seems good. Everything else seems oh, awful, and I don't want to be involved. No thanks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, well, there's one thing: the music in it. I have to say. It's been very good. The covers in there are wonderful. There's even one really, really, really amazing choice they made somewhere in the middle of it. I won't spoil in any way, shape, or form. That was a bold choice for them to do, and I really appreciate them doing it because they stuck to their guns. They could have easily gone to do something else, but they stuck with it for the whole song, and that was amazing. But their cover of, uh, of Beastie Boys was horrible, I got to say. <laughs> I mean, you got to fight for your right to party, and they, I'm sorry, they screwed that one up. I just got to say. 
So I, I, I would suggest uh, if you are a fan of the show, you should check out Suburgatory. It was Jane Levy. So the main character that plays Zoe. Um, this was the show that introduced me to her back in like 2011. Okay. Um, and it, it's, it, it, it's the kind of show that I think is right up your alley. Okay. Um, girl moves is moved from New York to like Connecticut to okay. like a suburban town. And she's like, why do I have to live here? This terrible, <laughs> dirty city is the best, but it, it's a lot of fun. Um, right. I, I, I will, uh, I mean, mostly the show was for my wife. She she wanted mm -hmm. to watch it, and then I was happy to watch the show with her. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll suggest this one. Yep. All right. All right. Well, I'll go next. Um, so it's that time of year again to where the show Billions is out again. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the brand new fifth season is out. Mm -hmm. I watched the first episode last night. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and it's off to a good start. Uh, picked up, you know, kind of where you left off last season and uh, really starting to look interesting here. I, I, one thing I'll say about Billions is uh, I like how they kind of, you know, things kind of sway one way and then back the other way, you know, and all. So uh, it, it's really a good story. If you haven't watched this uh, show, uh, I really recommend it, uh, you know, one of the best on TV, you know, right now at least. Um, and also I'll mention that uh, this is a Showtime movie, in case you don't know, or a Showtime um, t uh, series, in case you don't know. And uh, you can get Showtime via Hulu for four ninety nine a month for the next three months. Yep. So, okay. Does that require the Hulu Live package no. to get that or... Oh, I okay. don't think so. No, if Very you cool. just have the regular Hulu, I no, think it's the add, add on, on. kind of like you can add on HBO in right. any mm -hmm. of the other. Oh yeah, so, yeah I was just yeah. curious if it required live to no. get that add on. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, but they but they get that, and even with the four ninety nine price, you'll get a one week for free. Mm -hmm. to, you get the you free trial up, yeah. up front. In yeah, addition. seven days free and then four ninety nine a month yeah. for three months. Um, and right. if you're since you're back on the Showtime, um, if you didn't catch it, uh, there was a new show last year that I think you'd like, Black Monday. Uh, Black that Monday. deal. It's Don Cheadle. Um, oh it, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of a comedy dealing with the lead up to the stock market crash, uh, otherwise known as Black Monday in the eighties. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. The first season was awesome. I watched it back in the fall. They just finished airing the first half of season two. Mm. Um. Which so definitely worth. Uh. Since while you're while you have that show time, you might want to mm -hmm. check that out. And then there was also a show from the fall with Kevin Bacon. Uh. The about like. FBI corrupt FBI agent and uh, Boston's uh, like crime issues in the eighties, uh, starring mm -hmm. Kevin Bacon, City on a Hill. You uh, might like that okay. too. It's 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 a drama. I uh, I think overall it was pretty decent. Again, this was something I watched back in the fall um, when mm -hmm. it was airing. Uh, okay, weekly. But All right, good deal. Yeah, uh, definitely the Black Monday I'll watch, and then uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check out the uh, the City on the Hill as well. Yeah, and I think City on a Hill is actually based on true events, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, or at least uh, true people, a real people, maybe fictionalized story. But mm -hmm. cool, right. Mike. Well, you may have noticed. I have a, a new wardrobe this week. It comes from my new subscription to the excellent Raycon clothing service that got me these nice clothes. <laughs> but without having to, to talk to a doctor, so I'm growing my hair back. So and, let, let me just ask that's a Raycon shirt. <laughs> well, how's the fidelity? 
<laughs> and the, the fidelity is great. And they help me learn new skills to fight in the raid legends against dragons. <laughs> Have I missed any of the common ad companies? Uh, Casper, Casper, mini <laughs> mattress company in there oh, somewhere, and, right? And it helps me sleep better at night. Hey, man, man, no. oh, and they also, you know, Harry, man, they, Harry's skating. also sent you a razor, but you haven't exactly. used it, there so you, you can't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I, for, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think I saw this sales pitch on Sanford and Son once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I have nothing to rant and rave about, okay. so oh, okay. I just thought I'd something fun so, out there. So I will talk about something. I Last week I mentioned that uh, I had put in an order for that new TiVo stream thing. Thought I saw something mm -hmm. in your hand and earlier today. All they sent me was a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever. No, it, it actually that. arrived on Sunday. <laughs> when, when I got my tracking, it said it'll be there by Sunday. Nice. And I was like, okay, so I'll see it on Monday. No, I went outside and it was sitting on my porch on Sunday. I don't know why. Nice. But I got the new uh, TiVo uh, streaming dongle. Nice. Okay. Um, it looks kind of like a PlayStation. The way, <laughs> I don't know if you can see how it's the weird angles. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, two boxes stopped. Up, yeah, it's on, like they took top, like a, a little... half, like a deck of cards, and slid it over. I, I, I <laughs> assume there's probably a reason for that. Looks... And I'm just noticing there's a button on the side. Oh. But uh, so I, I mean, I've used it for a couple days. At first, I found it very, very frustrating. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> partly from setup because. There is no optional app, remote app. Hmm. Remember I what I was saying earlier is I don't want to be required to use an app to replace, you know, a bad remote. <laughs> right. But you need a remote app for your phone because otherwise... You need to type. Yeah. I mean, how else are you going to type? Bluetooth keyboard. I had to log. I, I had to log into so many things, uh, including <laughs> since it's Android, you connect it to your Google account, which I okay. expected. It's Android TV, mm -hmm. but then I had to go to my TiVo account to activate oh. it because okay. this is built around TiVo Plus. TiVo Plus is TiVo's version of Pluto TV. Okay, which is integrated into this. So it gives you a lot of the stuff that you I I remember from my TiVo. Like I pull up a guide. Since I'm not using Sling TV, that guide doesn't have any of the Sling stuff in it. But I don't actually have to launch an app if I want to watch stuff on Pluto. Like you want to, I don't have to launch a Pluto app. I just hit the guide. I choose what channel. It shows me what's uh, playing on each. You know, the guide pops up. I just click and it goes right into the thing. Uh, nice. It's pretty slick. Uh, and yeah, we were talking about remotes. So it's similar to the original, much smaller. I don't think it's as comfortable as my Roku remote, mm. but it is way better than that Apple thing. <laughs> um, I mean, you can see it's kind of contoured, so it actually fits in your hand. Uh, it's got... You know, it's uh, balanced, so I, you know, uh, but I'm I, I'm, I think I've been on the fence. I think I'm going to say I like this. Okay. I it have is, a question. Yeah. So I'm sure this is an obvious question to mm -hmm. anybody who's used TiVo before. Mm -hmm. So it does, it deep links into various, the guide deep links into various services. Like, yes. can you see the YouTube TV lineup? So and, no, uh, the oh, guide no. is, that's the one downside. The guide shows you TiVo plus right. content, which is essentially their Pluto. And then they're only, uh, they're set up to work with sling. So if you're oh. a sling provider, it would be listed in you, that guide from the main. 
That being said, if you go into the, when you push the Tebow button and it takes you into like the Tebow menu. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of setup, you go through and it says, what shows do you like to watch? And you choose a bunch of stuff. Uh, if you just go in there and it looks a lot like Fire TV in the fact that you can either look by in rows by app. So it'll say Netflix, Hulu, whatever. And then it shows all the shows that you're watching. And okay. you can just go over and select the show rather than launching Netflix, finding the show. In the Netflix thing, you can find the shows that you're watching. You just click on it. It takes you right into the show. Very cool. But if you go into the My Shows uh, area, then it's just got a list of all the stuff that you're w currently watching. You select the show, you select what episode, and then it just plays. So it's bringing back the thing that I missed from Google TV, which was uh, the prime time mm. where I didn't have to go search for stuff. I just told it, I want to watch, uh, I want to watch this show. And then when you go, or when you bring up your show, you click on your show, it shows you all the different uh, services that you subscribe to that you can watch it. So you okay. choose. So you can say, okay, like, uh, uh, I'm watching, uh, what's the, uh, the Bob Newhart show sure. season two, episode three. Okay. Would you like to watch it on Hulu or YouTube TV? Gotcha. Hulu. Okay. And then, and then it literally just takes you right in. Um, so that is really nice. Uh, That's cool. and the other thing, which I know is a point of contention for some other people the Roku app or the Twitch app is there and Yay. it is updated. So uh, Twitch understands that if you have an Android app, there is no reason you shouldn't have an Android TV app because they're the same freaking app. Right. <laughs> you just need to put a line of code that says it's okay to navigate with a remote. So, um, uh, uh, I forgot my question. I apologize. I, hate like, when that it, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. How's the fidelity on that? Uh, oh, I, like, my TV is only 1080p. Uh, so, I mean, it looks fine. It looks great. Looks just looks as good, good as my Roku. Um, okay. Does TiVo charge you anything to have no. the access to? Okay. Nope. Okay. See, and that's the thing. It's it's not it's not a DV. It doesn't have the DVR functionality. Of course I, not. I saw a uh, review... And then uh, a couple other people linked that review and sent it to me that I had already seen. And the guy, his big complaint was, you you don't have access to DVR uh, content. Well, it's not a DVR. Now, yeah. if you're talking about able to access t actual TiVos that are in your house, yeah, I, I don't know of anything that does that. But maybe uh, the, in mm. the future. Uh, maybe. Maybe. You know, if you want to watch, like, if you've got to still have a TiVo in your bedroom and you want to watch content off of it in the living room. I mean, I used to be able to do that between TiVos. You had to transfer it and it took forever and it wasn't great. But um, the remote, it's like I said, it's okay. Uh, it's much better than the Fire TV and the, and the Apple, in my opinion. Not as good as a Roku. And if not, I mean, it doesn't have a play pause button. It doesn't? Want, no. It's used like like the Google, like some other stuff, like the Fire TV or whatever. But uh, The Apple TV remote has that. Yeah. I mean, a lot. some of them just have the multi-function button in the middle. And I don't like that. I like my Roku play pause, but... Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to put together a full uh, video on cool. it. Cool. Uh, Very cool. I, yeah, it took me a little while to get my brain wrapped around because it's not the Android TV I was expecting. It, as I thought it was, it is fully skinned, mm -hmm. uh, completely different. And yeah, there's some, there's some stuff that was super confusing. I, I got so remind us, remind us of the price of that again. Uh, right cool. now it's fifty bucks. Um, yeah. so till the end of the month. Sounds, it sounds like it's a pretty good deal for fifty bucks. It, 
Yes. Uh, in the caveat is it will be good for some people, not for mm -hmm. everybody. Sure. Well, um, I mean, every device is lucky. Yeah, exactly. And like, but yeah. as I was getting at is, uh, the, the UI and the, there's different layers to that onion. Um, mm -hmm. that un, it, until you kind of understand how they function together, it's easy to get lost. I mm. got to a point when I was first using it that I couldn't figure out why can't I access any of the stuff that I remember seeing earlier and I had to unplug it and reboot it to get back to, yeah, this is what I was looking for. And then I didn't realize, oh yeah, I forgot. I haven't used Android TV in so long that button with the circle, that's yeah. home. So you have to button. hit home to get out of the TiVo app that's running in there that it wants to be in. Um, but the, oh, the, uh, integration with, uh, Android assistant, uh, is great. Cause sure. at the, there was one point where I couldn't figure out, I can't figure out how to get to the store, Google play store. So I just pushed the button and I said, Hey, uh, Funimation now. And then it took me to the store and said, Oh, do you want to download this app? Yes. And then, cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll do a full, I'll do a full rundown on it. Uh, and uh, get that up soon. Very cool. Hopefully this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to it. I'm, I, I, that, I don't need another streaming box right now, but I would be really interested in getting one. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I... The, the form factor, this thing... Uh, I have questions about whether or not the... When I first when I first set it up, the remote kept disconnecting. And I can't figure out if it was just because of something, a bug in the startup, because it got it immediately got an update once I got it set up. Or if it's the fact that this is literally hanging behind my TV. Right. Uh, but I will say I didn't have to do anything to the remote. It just automatically figured out how to talk to my TV. So nice. the integrated volume and power and input, all that stuff just worked. Very cool. Immediately. So, yeah. All right. All righty. Well, we can uh, probably go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us again this week. Uh, we... <laughs> I was going to say something, but you know what? Forget it. Uh, if if you're catching this for the first time uh, you should, or after the fact, uh, you should join us every week. Uh, join us live here Wednesday nights on Twitch at 9 p.m. Central. Uh, this is where all the fun happens. You get to participate in the chat. You get to submit titles, which we are going to vote on in the post show, which you also don't get to see. Uh, unless you're here live. So uh, head on over to tvs.showbot.tv, all of you that are here, and uh, we'll, we'll get that remind up there. Uh, we'll vote on whatever couple titles are there. And then a reminder, uh, the May movie party is this Saturday. We are going to be watching Peter Jackson's greatest movie, Bad Taste. Um, and then hopefully uh, what... Uh, I can't remember the name of the movie. It also goes by Brain Dead. Uh, but yes, it's gonna be a Peter Jackson night. So, um, <laughs> that is 10 p.m. Central, uh, where movie parties can be had. And M Beam, we would love to have you there. We miss you. Uh, oh yeah, Dead Alive. Thanks, Bad Weave. So ah. Dead Alive. Uh, that one's kind of tricky because. It's not streaming anywhere legitimately and new DVDs are available, but they're like 30 bucks. So it was like, mm, I don't know about that. So, yep. All right. Uh, everybody head on over to the post show. We will meet you there. Thanks. We will see you guys next week. Bye. Yeah. Diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>